That's gender neutral. It's gender neutral because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, that he has made us both kings and priests. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's both not kings or priests. He made us king and priests. I have a kingly mantle to declare his decrees into the earth realm, but with my priestly mantle, I can go up to him and receive his instructions from heaven. Is this making sense to y'all? He has made us both kings and priests. So I'm a king. The Bible says that he's the king of kings and the Lord of? Lord. 1 Timothy 6, verse 15. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Now I'm going to read this to you in the Aramaic Bible. The Aramaic Bible in plain English. It is the glory of God that hides the word. And the glory of the king that seeks for the word. Let me read that to you. In the Aramaic, the Aramaic Bible in plain English. It is the glory of God that hides the word. Everybody say the word it has to be hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the glory of the king, that's me. Everybody say that's me. That seeks for the word. Are you seeking for the word? How bad are you craving this word? The Bible says he who hungers, hallelujah, and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. Matthew 5, verse 6. Are you seeking? Are you craving on a daily basis? Or are you getting drops here and there? Hallelujah. See, the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, seek ye second. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. See, we seek the things without seeking the individual who gives the things. Uh, let me say that one more time. We seek after the things without seeking out the, uh, seeking out for the individual who gives the things. What are the things that it's talking about? It's talking about the basic necessities of life. The basic necessities of life. And the time is out for us to continue to seek God for his hand and not seek his face. Hallelujah. Then if my people, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, hallelujah, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then when I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Hallelujah. Then if my people, that's not talking about the people that's in the world. He's talking about the people that's in the church. The people that's in the church acting worse than the people that's in the world. Yeah. Jesus. Does the way that you live your life, does the way that you half-heartedly seek the Father, want somebody else to say, you know what, man, your God is attractive. Or they like, no, nah, I, I, I chill on that one. See, that's why you got people turning to Allah. That's why you got people turning to Buddha. That's why you got people turning to New Age. Because Christianity has become a laughing stock. Ishmael is still mocking Isaac. Ishmael is still mocking Isaac. Jesus. And this is a problem in this last day move. We take this thing too lightheartedly. We have to be serious about the word of God. We have to be serious when we're seeking it. Righteousness is all the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Is this blessing y'all because I'm ready to be back. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the king. Excuse me, is the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory of kings, the glory of kings. And let me tell you something about your calling. Your calling is not decided, it's discovered. Amen. Your calling is not decided. See, if I, if I can decide my own calling, that's not, that's not in the Father's will. That's humanism. Amen. What does humanism say? Humanism say you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. And we live in such a society to where the first thing that we ask our child is, what do you want to be when you grow up? As opposed to, you know what? You're going to be who God created you to be. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you don't have to preach in that, do you? You don't have to preach in that, do you? They got five steps to get your blessing. <laughs> Click your heels and then and turn around five times and you're going to get your miracle money. <laughs> <laughs> See, we laugh about that, but do you know that there are people that are in so much bondage? Yeah. So much bondage in the church because my people are destroyed for a what? A lack, a lack of knowledge. Hosea Amen. 4, verse 6. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. It's not, it's not decided. It's discovered. You have to discover it. You have to discover it. Now, I want you to, I want you to go to, I want you to go to uh, Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. I love that in a New Living translation. It says, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. 
Do you wait? Or do you, or you do it like this? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Or do you just get up and go? Hallelujah. See, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 3, do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. You have to learn how to bask in his presence. Do you know that being quiet is still a form of prayer? What good is a relationship if I'm the only one that's getting the dominant word? God wants to speak back to you. Amen. Stop always bringing him your Amen. request. Hallelujah. He got some stuff he wants to say to you as well. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. In the morning, oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Anytime you come before the Father, there should be a spirit of expectation on the inside of you. You should be expecting him. Even John the Baptist sent one of his disciples at the time to Jesus in Matthew 11, verse 3. He said, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? I brought y'all here because we're in the, in the spirit of back to school. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Raise your hand if you, you're getting your kids and stuff ready to go back to school. Raise your hand if you're going back to school. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I remember when I was younger, Joe. I remember when I was younger. And, 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 and there was such an anticipation on the first day of school. Because I was going to kill them. <laughs> I was going to kill them. I was going to kill them. I had the shirt. I had the pants. I had the shoes. I'm talking about I'm just like this. I'm, I'm standing in the mirror. I done tried it on about seven times already. <laughs> It was an expectation. It was, man, uh, y'all, right there, if I'm, if I'm down your street, y'all already know. Y'all already know. Y'all already have some, you homeschool. You still made your mama go shopping for you, though, did you? Yeah, I know you did. I know you did. I know you did. You could have stand in front of the computer and look pretty. Y'all got Zoom with me. Tell them you Zoom with me. You Zoom with me. So, 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 so I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm, I'm sitting down, Mike, and I'm like, ooh, man, I said, I'm going to go in. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the J's with these. No, 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 I'm gonna switch them up and put the Air Force with them. I'm, I'm gonna wait till the middle. I'm, I'm gonna wait till the middle of the week and I'm gonna hit them with them right here. <laughs> Y'all already know. Y'all already know. I'm down your street because that's exactly how it is. That's the expectation that you have. But watch this. As soon as those clothes start running thin, dang, bro. Now it's like pulling teeth trying to get you out that bed. Now let me bring that to a spiritual connotation for you. Let me bring that to a spiritual standpoint for you. When you when you wake up in the morning, you ought to be fired up every morning for the Father. You ought to have an expectation every morning that you get up with the Father. But then it becomes redundant. Amen. Oh Lord, here we go again. Here we go again. Lord, here we go. See, and it's not a duty, it's a pleasure. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. It's not a duty, it's a pleasure. And God loves you so much that he won't obligate you to do it. He won't obligate you to do it. The choice is your today. I've given you a choice <laughs> between life and death, between life and death, between blessings and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life, so that you and your descendants may live. Come on, me, thirty verse nineteen, so that you and your descendants may live. It's not always about you, because the decisions that you make not only affect you, it affect those that are around you, Amen. and it affect those that are connected to you. Amen. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. An expectation, an expectation. The Bible says. As the door swings back and forth, and forth on his hinges, so the lazy person turns over in bed. Mm. Let me quote that again. Let me quote that again. Proverbs 26, verse 14. Mm. As the door swings back and forth on his hinges, so the lazy person turns over in bed. See, we was fired up, but now, five more minutes, Lord. You know he prompting you at 2 o'clock in the morning to get up and go pray. He's going to sustain you. Ooh, I'm convicting somebody right now. He's going to sustain you. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to quicken your mortal body, according to Romans 8, verse 11. He's going to give you vigor. He's going to give you vitality. So if he gets you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's because he wants to show you great and unsearchable things you know not. Amen. Huh. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Is this making sense to y'all? God, I was ready. God, I was ready. In the morning, oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait. Wait in, expect wait in expectation. The Bible says... In Jeremiah 29, verse 13, that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Not some of your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me Amen. with all of your heart. The Father is looking for wholehearted devotion. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Yes. No, 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 no. So you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. 
about a year or so ago. That was his man. And he was in a bad way. Everybody say true story. True story. He was in a bad way. He was, he was in a bad way. And, and he said, man, I don't know why, but something. Everybody say something. something. No, no, no. It wasn't something. It was someone. I don't know why, but something is telling me that I need to, I, I, I need to get in touch with you. And, 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 and man, it's been on my heart to do this for months, and I just haven't done it. Man, man, I'm about to lose everything. I'm about to lose my life. I'm about to lose my wife. I'm about to lose my kids. I don't know what to do, but I'm, man, look, I'm, I'm, I'm at my wit's end, and I need somebody right now. And, and something was just telling me to reach out to you. Something was telling me to reach out to you, and then I sit back, and I'm like, Lord, me? Me? Somebody's seeking you. And when they seek you, you're leading them to me? Come on, man. Let me, let me slow that down for y'all. Open arms. Let me slow that down for y'all online. The, somebody is seeking after the Father, and the Father will lead that person to you. That's right. That's why your vessel got to remain pure. That's why your vessel has to remain clean. Because you never know when the Father is going to lead somebody your way. Amen. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Morning by morning, he awakens me and opens my understanding to his will. Isaiah 5, uh, 50, verse 4. It's just making sense to y'all. Yes. He will lead individuals to you because he can trust you with them. He can trust you with his most prized possession. And what's his most prized possession? His most prized possession is not money. God don't need your money. Amen. Every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle of a thousand hills. Psalm 50, Amen. verse 10. He don't need that. He created that. His most prized possession are souls. Snatch others from the fire and save them, Jude chapter 1, verse 23. He wants souls. Amen. All souls are mine, says the Lord, Amen. according to Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Is this making sense to y'all? So as soon as this man gets in touch with me, I'm praying about, Lord, how do you want me to handle this situation because it's fragile? Just ask him if he's accepted me. I asked the guy if he's accepted him and he... Yeah, I have. Watch this. I've been baptized. Because that's the first thing they'll tell you. Yep. They equate baptism with salvation. Yeah. And that has absolutely nothing to do with it. That's right. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. So I explained the gospel to him, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Yeah. The simplicity of the gospel. He accepts Jesus right there, and he said, man, I knew I was supposed to call you. I knew I was supposed to call you. And from then on, this man been living his life. Not perfect, but putting forth the perfect effort. Is this making sense to y'all? You will seek me and find me. When you seek me, when you seek me with all of your heart. Is this blessing y'all so far? Yes. The word seek is mentioned in the Bible 244 times. 244 times in this word of God that the word seek is mentioned. And we're not seeking him, you guys. See, see, there's a difference. What God is looking for, he's looking for seekers. But he's not, gonna, he's not looking for individuals that are seeker sensitive. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to break it down for you. He's looking for seekers, but not individuals that are seeker sensitive. We have churches or glorified social clubs that people are meeting in, and there's a seeker sensor church. They're seeker, seeker sensitive. And what does that mean? It's tailored for your comfort. Amen. I'll never talk about your sin. Jesus. I'll, never, I'll, never, I'll never step on your toes. Amen. I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to make you feel comfy, okay? Yeah. And I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not going to preach beyond a certain limit because I know that you have to go because your, your, your greens are cooking. <laughs> That's what you call seeker sensitive. That's right. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. Is this making sense to y'all? It's time out for seeker sensitive Christians. It's time out for these, these situations. We have to cry loud and spare not because Jesus is closer today than he was yesterday. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm taking it this morning that y'all are just taking this all in. I'm taking it this morning that y'all are just taking it all in. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, seeker, seeker sensitive. 
Seek assessments. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to um, I want you to go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Hallelujah. Is this a word of blessing y'all so far? Amen. Amen. David said in Psalm 146, verse 3. He said, I reach out for you. I thirst for you as parched land thirst for rain. Ah, I love that scripture. I love that scripture. He said, I reach out for you. I thirst for you as parched land thirst for rain. Are you seeking the Father on that level? To where there's a sensation of dryness? The Bible says in John 19, verse 28, I thirst. That's what Jesus said. That's all he said. He said, I thirst. <laughs> and what was the thirst? It wasn't a physical thirst. It was a sensation of dryness that was in his soul because he had communion with the Father. And anytime you don't commune with the Father, there is a hungering and there is a thirsting on the inside of you. Woe be unto anybody who tries to stand before God's people and they hadn't even been communicating with him. Woe be unto anybody who doesn't live this life the way they're supposed to. Because we're in the day where people are calling good evil and evil good. They're putting light for darkness and darkness for light. Bitterness for sweet and sweet for bitterness. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, yes, yes. You shall have no other gods before me. And that's it. Is it do, I, do I need to get some revelation from out of that? Or does that say what it says? Everybody say it. Say what it says. Yeah, I know that that's not grammatically correct. But it say what it says. You shall have no other gods before me or beside me, one translation said. Why? Because Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 15 says that our God is a jealous God. Amen. He's not jealous of you. He's jealous for you. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not jealous of you. He's jealous for you. And what is he jealous for? He's jealous for your worship. That's what he's jealous for. He wants wholehearted devotion in his last day. We have to seek him while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. That's right. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to really and truly ponder on this. What is hindering you from giving God full and wholehearted devotion? What's hindering you? What is prominent in your life? Is it that job? Is it that spouse? Is it those kids? Whatever is prominent in your life, you have to lay those things aside. You have to lay those burdens down. You have to lay those things aside. You have to cast them away from you. Everybody say, give me an illustration. Give me an illustration. Give me an illustration. So, so, so this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. You, you make these vows to the Father. And once you make vows for the Father, you're like, Lord, I'm locked in. It's just me and you. Ain't nobody, nobody going to come in between us. You feeling good this day. You feeling good this day. you like, Lord, woo, just me and you. I don't need no distractions. And whatever come my way, I'm telling you, I ain't stopping it. I ain't stopping it. And then this is what happens. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. All right, all right, that, that, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, God, that's okay, that, that's an anonymous, that's, a, that's an anonymous number, stop right there, stop right there, see, see, now stop right here, see, see, now, now watch this, watch this, I come from an age, I come from an era, I come from an era where everybody that was connected to us, they had their own ringtone, oh my God, see, I ain't that old now, I know some of y'all did the same thing, I, everybody that was connected to us, they had their own ringtone. Raise your hand if you can attest to that. Yeah, I know. They was in y'all fab five. Yeah, y'all know it. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. I'm talking about everybody. So you already knew who was going to call. You already knew who was going to call when they called. You're like, man, that was anonymous. I don't even know who that was. So, Lord, I'm in prayer with you. I'm in prayer with you. But then the next one come on. And you're like, man, it's your ringtone. It's your ringtone. Are y'all following me? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that, that's just my prayer. That's my prayer part. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them my revelation after I come out of prayer with you, God. I'm, after, after I come out of, after I come out of this prayer, after I come out of this, I'm gonna be a lion, Lord. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to them and we are gonna bounce the word off each other. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. See, that was my prayer part. But you got that one. Everybody say that one. That one. You got that one that will make you compromise your salvation. 
Jesus. You got that one that will make you compromise your salvation. You got that one person you in the middle and of the Father showing you something. You in the middle of fasting. You in the middle of praying. You in the middle of the Father giving you revelation knowledge. And before you know it, that one come on. I told y'all I was coming for y'all this morning. You got that one. You got that one that's gonna really, really cause you to. Lord, I know. Are y'all hearing me this morning? And everybody say that they something. Everybody say that they something until that pressure is applied and it gets real. Everybody is a Christian until it gets biblical. Everybody is a Christian until it gets biblical. And this is real life. We cannot allow anything or anyone to stand in between us and seeking the Father wholeheartedly. Is this making sense to y'all? You got to get to a point to where you intentionally silence the phone. You got to get to the point to where you intentionally see a number come across and you sidestep that. Because I know, Father, that I need my destiny over my gratification. Hey, y'all got me preaching this morning. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody say no other gods. 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 Let's go to uh let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And watch this. I want y'all to be real. And I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you right there. Watch, 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 watch. What you're passionate about, you will pursue. Mm-hmm. Write that down. What you're passionate about, you will pursue. Whatever you're passionate about, you will pursue. I'm going to give y'all a story. Everybody say true story. True. There was this man, and he saw a woman of God. He saw a woman of God that was a single lady. He was a single man. She was going after the father's heart. She did not compromise. She stayed in services on Bible study days. She stayed in services when the doors opened for church. She was on a ministry team and she was going hard for the father. This man saw how attractive she was, not only just in in appearance, but he saw the worship that she had on the inside of her. He got down on his knees and he continued to seek the Lord for this woman in particular. Hey, this is going to minister to somebody. This is going to minister to somebody. He prayed for this woman of God. He fasted for this woman of God. He did everything that he could possibly do just to get in right standing with this woman of God. And guess what happens? He gets the woman of God. And as soon as he gets the woman of God, as soon as he gets the woman of God, what happens is for you a few months from a few months of them being married, he starts to mistreat her. He starts to mistreat the woman of God. He starts to abuse the woman of God. He starts to do all of these things that he knows doesn't line up with this word of God. But in the midst of this, the woman of God is still seeking the father. And God had to show himself to the man in a dream. God came to the man. Everybody say true story. God came to the man in a dream and he told him, he said, if you touch her again, you're a dead man. If you touch her again, you're dead. Everybody say, give me Bible. Bible. Job said in Job 7, verse 14, he said, you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions. I'll give you Bible on it. I'll give you Bible on it. I'll give you Bible on it. Why? Because he says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 22, he said, you touch her again, you're a dead man. He wakes up the next day and there's such a fear over him. His wife looks at him in the bed and he's almost stoned. He's almost stoned, and she's like, you okay? He was like, I'm fine. He leaves immediately and comes back with flowers. And from that day on, he started to cherish what the Father had given him. Now, let me ask you a question. Is it going to take all that for the Father to get your attention? When the Father gives you what you prayed for, when the Father gives you what you've been seeking and fasting after him for, are you going to turn and trample that under your foot? The Bible says when I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. 
Hosea 13, verse 6. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Jesus. Jesus. Be self-reliant. Boy, y'all are quiet this morning. I hope I ain't scared, y'all. I'm just quiet. <laughs> be self-what? Be self-controlled and alert, attentive. Your friend. Enemy. Your what? Enemy. Your enemy, the who? The devil. the devil. What does he do, you guys? Prowl Prowl around like a what? Did it ever say he was a lion? Light. It said like a roaring lion, Light. looking for someone to do what? To devour. To devour. Your enemy. I'm going to try something with y'all. I'm going to try something with y'all because y'all are very, very smart. When I say one thing, I want y'all to tell me the opposite. Up, Down. in, Down. right, Down. God, Down. no, <laughs> ah. See, we always equate Satan and God on the same playing field. And they're not. No. And they're not. They're not. You have to understand that the enemy is a defeated foe. Right. And God cast Lucifer from out of heaven. Amen. He's nowhere near the playing field of the Father. That's right. And that's the first thing we do. Up, down, in, out. God, Satan. No, sir. That's not a battle. That's not a battle at all. It says your adversary today. He said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. You can try to be God's enemy, but it ain't going to work. It's just making sense to y'all. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to do what? Take that to the King James Version for me. Go to the King James for me. Mm -hmm. Are y'all getting blessed by this word this morning? Amen. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about doing what, you guys? Seeking. Seeking. Whom he may devour, or who may give him the opportunity. Yeah. Who may give him the opportunity. Come here, y'all too, y'all too. Come here, come here. Who may give him, give him the opportunity. D, I want you to go to the, you go over here. Where you from? Please stand, you stand right here. Turn the way, turn the way. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm doing everything that I possibly can to make it to the Father. And it, and, and, and it seems like every time I try to make a step, the enemy is there holding me back. Putting me back. Because one thing that you have to understand about your adversary, this is only for illustration purposes, you're not my adversary, because if you need it, we're going to get out there. <laughs> Watch this. This is what happens. Anytime you try to move forward in the things of God, the enemy is going to always try to hold you captive to who you used to be. Right. As soon as I make a step, you, you know you ain't even smart. Take a step. You know, I really know. See, they don't know. They don't know. And you're going to try to get up there. You're going to try to get up there and preach to people, but I know. Have y'all ever had those fights? <laughs> Have y'all ever had those internal battles? Yeah, I know. I know. See, see, you, you up there smiling with them. But see, I really know. I know what's going on. But see, see, what ends up happening is the more and more he talks, the more and more that should assure you that he's afraid of your destiny. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. That should be reassurance. That should be reassurance that he doesn't want you to make it to the pinnacle. He doesn't want you to make it to where the Father is. And the Hallelujah. more and more you talk, come on with me. Amen. Come on with me. Come on with me. The more and more you move, the more and more he's gonna be there. Because that's what you call a familiar spirit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Until it gets to a point to where you can reach the Father, and he's still gonna be trying to talk. But when you get here, this is what's going to end up happening. He's going to try to accuse you before the father day and night. Because the Bible says that he's an accuser of the brother. Right. Yeah. On a daily basis. Does that make sure y'all praise God for them right here? Yeah. He's going to try to accuse you on a daily basis. But that only means that you're doing what you're supposed to do. I heard it said like this before. That dogs don't bark at parked cars. Mm. 
It's only when they're moving. It's only when progression is taking place. So you know that progression is taking place when that's all they doing. There. That's all they doing. Just barking, 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 roaring like a lion. Like a lion, trying to get you to capitulate, trying to get you to surrender. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I want, I'm going to get ready to end on this. I want you to, want you to go to, thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to, uh, yeah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Let's go there in the message translation. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. In the message translation. And we're going to read 18 and 19, possibly. The Holy Spirit allows us to. And now, I'm going to tell you who you are. Now this is this is this is Jesus, and he's talking to Peter after after Peter had received the revelation that that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God, and Jesus told him that flesh and blood did not reveal this to him, but his Father who was in heaven. So that right there lets you know that if you're in the flesh, you can't receive revelation knowledge. He said, "Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven." Is this making sense to y'all? And now I'm going to tell you who you are, really are. You are Peter. A rock, Petros. This is the rock on which I will put together my what? Church. My ecclesia, my called out ones. This is the called out governing body. You are the church. The Bible says in Philemon 1 verse 2, uh, verse two to the church who meets in your home. We are the church. We're a, we're a makeup of the church. Wherever you go, that's the church. Where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Matthew 18, verse 20. Now, do I neglect coming to church? Absolutely not. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as some are in the habit of doing. So you need the fellowship. You need the koinonia in order for you to be edified and built up so that you can go out and war together. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to do what? Keep it out. Let's go to the next verse. And that's not all. You might, you will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes where, you guys? A no on earth is a nowhere in heaven. in heaven. So what does that mean? That means that whatever you allow, heaven allows. Whatever you forbid, heaven forbids. That's the authority because keys give you access. Amen. Keys give you authority while you're here in this present state of existence. And God has given us all keys to be able to unlock the sphere of influence that he's entrusted to us. Somebody got keys? Let me see some keys. Who got keys? No, I don't got keys. See your keys, Joe. See your keys, Joe. Now, have you ever been in a place at home and you're like, man, golly, I can't, I can't what? I can't find my keys. I can't, Lord, oh, hammer, somebody did it this morning. I can't, I can't find, I can't find my keys. But see, this is what we say. I, lo I lost my keys. But did you really lose them? You didn't lose them, you just did what? You misplaced them. And that's what a lot of us are doing. We're misplacing our relationship with the Father with other things. You got to get back to the Genesis. Amen. When I misplace something, that means that I've, I've, I've literally inappropriately positioned it. <laughs> I've inappropriately positioned it. And some of y'all have inappropriately positioned your relationship with the Father because you're putting all of these other things on the altar of your heart. And God is only designed to be at that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why the Bible says that it's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Psalms 118, verse 8. Is this making sense to y'all? Stop misplacing the relationship. Stop misplacing your trust. Stop misplacing your affection just because somebody is telling you something and, it, and you think that it means it, and you think that it means you well when it really and truly doesn't. 
Hallelujah. You're misplacing your affections in these places. And as a result of that, when you're, when you're putting unrealistic expectations on people, it sets you up for failure. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can't always, if you have to trust an individual to be who they are. Trust them to be who they are. And when somebody shows you who they are the first time, believe them. I always use plan. No, you wasn't. I heard it say it like this before. 50% of every joke has truth to it. Yep. Let me say that again. 50% of every joke has truth to it. Your spirit doesn't know how to joke. This is why the Bible talks about in Ephesians 5 verse 4. To let no uh, uh, coerced joking come from out of your mouth. Ephesians 4.29 talks about letting no unwholesome talk come from out of your mouth. God, I love your word. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Amen. I want y'all to praise God if y'all got something. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Everybody stand up with me if you possibly can. Let's pray for social media. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My goodness. My goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak life over each and every person that's under the sound of my voice, as well as through these airwaves. And I declare right now in Jesus' matchless name, Father, that anybody, Father, who has misplaced their affections, anybody who has, has, has placed unrealistic expectations on people, Father, and placed them on the altar of their heart, a place in which only you are designed to sit, we sever it right now in the matchless name of Jesus. And we repent, Father, for anything that doesn't line up with your word or your will. Test us, Lord, and try us. Examine our hearts and our minds, according to Psalm 26, verse 2. And those who don't know you, I just believe by faith, God, that this day, Father, they have a divine encounter with you. They drop to their knees and they say, what must I do to be saved? And it's as easy as confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart, according to Romans 10, verse 9, that Jesus is Lord. So, Lord, we just bless you and we thank you, Father, for the souls. We thank you, Father, and we cry out to you, Father. We reach out to you just as David did, as, as parts land thirst for rain. We bless you for being the great merciful father that you are. And we just believe by faith that those who, who, who once knew you, but they've found themselves in a place to where they've backslidden, that they come back into right alignment, back into right fellowship with you. We honor you and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. Y'all praise God here one more time.